Uh, I got to tell you, man, I'm I'm starting to get them juices going again okay, here. Okay. I'm starting to get them juices going. So watching some of the practice video Chris Ballas has put out on his Twitter account. Uh, great great follow as well, uh, Ballas Wolverine. Uh, but nonetheless, you're going out there. Tell me a, a little bit about your excitement level as we approach game day. Extremely exciting. Last year I didn't get a chance to go out there. I mean, the game was uh, – Excuse me. It was in Miami at Hard Rock Stadium. I didn't. I didn't go. Yeah, I think last year I was more so along the side. If they get the win, I'll go to the national championship because I didn't necessarily think they were ready. I was hoping for it, but I didn't go and support. This year it's a much different team. This year I want to show support as well. So I'm going out there. I'm excited. The feeling is going to be real. Ryan, when I when I look at this situation, we talk about Ohio State or Georgia, and then we talked a little bit last week, and it said it had to be Georgia because you want them to do everything. You want them to accomplish everything in their way to become mm. number one in the country, to be the number one brand. Also, to get retribution for last year and what Georgia did to Michigan, you got to be ready to win in these games. And I think Michigan has been built up to be ready to beat TCU, to go into the Georgia game in the national championship. You look at Michigan last year. Michigan, and we talked about it, they were excited to be there. It was like the first time they beat Ohio State in so long. It was the first time they won the Big Ten Championship in so long. Now they're coming out here. It was like, all right, we're here. Well, eh, well, maybe we win, maybe we don't, but we're here. We're better. Their attitude isn't that this year. You talked about J.J. McCarthy and Donovan Edwards and waiting and watching the confetti fall and watching the press conferences because they knew that they would be back. Mm -hmm. And they knew that they would do anything in their power in this offseason, whether it was working out whether it was extra reps, whether it was extra routes, whether it was on the jug machine, whether it was in a classroom, whether it was together, they've done everything that they can to prepare themselves for this moment again. And it's here against the TCU. TCU is nothing but a team that's in their way. Now, TCU and Max Duggan, they're a good ball club. Running back Bell is under underrated. The receiver, 6'5", big guy. He's going to be a, he's gonna be a matchup issue early on in the game. But their second-half team, that is just in our way. When you watch TCU, by the time the games are over, TCU has expended all the injury in, uh, energy that they have. Max Duggan looked like he almost died last, well, a couple weeks ago against Kansas State, and they got the L. And they took the L. Michigan gets better and stronger, but do you know how that is? That's just not because they want to win more. That's because Ben Herbert has these guys. The strength and conditioning coach for Michigan, they are the most in shape team. They are the fastest team. When's the last time you've been able to say that about Michigan? Right. Speed the, kills, man. They're the fastest team. They're the most in shape team. They have the best endurance. And if you notice everybody fading towards the end of the third through the fourth quarter, guess who's getting stronger? It's Michigan. Michigan's been doing that every year. TCU is a second-half team that barely wins in the second half. Michigan is a second-half team that's waiting for that moment, whether it's eight minutes left in the fourth, whether it's the start of the third quarter. They're looking for that moment to blow you out, and that's what they've done. So I'm looking for a Michigan team that knows that they're much better than TCU, that doesn't waste time, that doesn't play around, does what they've been doing all year long, and get back to a game against Georgia because that's what this season was built on. It wasn't even about the national championship. We'll see you guys if you happen to be there. It was always about Georgia. You know, it, it, it feels like a business trip, and I know those guys have said that, a, a business trip as opposed to a vacation. And you were talking about some of the similarities the first time you went out to the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Uh, and you guys treated it like a vacation as well that first time you went out there. We did. And when people hear this, it's not that we treated it like a vacation. Like, we weren't practicing hard. Like, we were just out there sliding. Well, Lloyd doesn't go for that. So we practice hard. But we were trying to do everything and anything that they put on our schedule where they told us it was impossible. We were excited to go to Disneyland. We were excited to go to, to this club. I mean, we did hang out. I was 21. So we hung out at a couple different venues. We, we went where the stars were. We did a lot of touristy stuff. We were out there in Beverly Hills, California. We were staying at the Beverly Hills Wilshire. You know how nice. Oh, man. You know how nice that place is. It's right down the you street. You know what time it is. Oh, man, you know what time it is. Right down the street from <laughs> UCLA. It's right down the street from Rodeo Drive. So we were we were just doing what it took. We were hanging out with former Michigan players that were in the NFL that was taking us around. I'm not putting anybody in business out there. <laughs> Shout out to my big brothers. But we were doing everything, including training. When you go on these type of trips, Ryan and Monty, you're going to win the Rose Bowl. Now, Michigan is going for way more than the Rose Bowl. They're going to win a playoff game that is going to get them into a national championship, that is going to give them an opportunity to win their, what, third national championship that's claimed, mm. an actual claimed national championship. So with that being said, when we came out there the second time to play Texas, and I was 
trying to, you know, get drafted as high as I could. I didn't have time for all the extra SHIT. I didn't have all. I didn't have no time. I didn't. Have, I didn't care about the stars. I didn't care about parties. I we we. It's not an I thing. We we didn't care about. All we cared about was practice, and going back to that ho- that hotel room, and getting ready, getting ice if we needed, getting our sleep, making sure we had the right amount of sleep. Because all we cared about was beating Texas. Because Vince Young and Cedric Benson, rest in peace, Derek Johnson, those dudes weren't better than us. We didn't respect the Big 12. Hmm. We got prepared for a business trip, and we treated it like such. Much different than the first time around. And you got beat, but at the end of the day, you wake up in the morning and say, hey, man. a field goal. Wait, yeah, 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 right. You, exactly. Yeah. You put your best foot forward, and sometimes you're going to get beat. But I'm not going to beat myself. Defensive coordinator. Right. <laughs> Either way, you know, yeah. I mean, you guys went out there, you put your best foot forward. I will say this, too, about... Uh, Michigan, I don't know if we here locally, and I think nationally, they give him a ton of credit, uh, and he deserves it, but I don't think locally we have fully appreciated or given Jim Harbaugh the recognition that he is due. Uh, Articles written about him this week, Bruce Feldman had one today, uh, talking about how Jim Harbaugh in the last two years... 25-2 25-2 and two in the past two years after the program really hit rock bottom. And all of a sudden you get this incredible turnaround. Wrote a story in The Athletic today. I uh, encourage everybody to go read it. Um, how did he do it? So many of us, me included. I'll, 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 be, I'll be the first to raise my hand. I wanted him gone. I just didn't think he had it anymore. I just didn't think that it was going to work out in Ann Arbor. I appreciated the fact that he came, but uh, five years in, it just it still didn't beat Ohio State. Michigan State was still, in my eyes, above yeah. where Michigan was. Uh, and then 24 months later, they're on the top of the college football world. I would say that only Georgia is in a better spot in the country right now. I mean, if you go, USC is moving in that direction. Yeah. But I mean, if you look around the country, there aren't four football programs that you would rather have than the University of Michigan right now. Not four of them. So you're a top five program no matter what. And you've got a chance for your first national championship in 25 years. And not only that, um, to come from where they've come from, uh, two and four covid Probably would have lost by 100 uh, yeah. to Ohio State that year had COVID not canceled the game. And say what you want about, about that one, but they didn't play it. Yeah. Uh, I just don't, I, I don't even, I got to give him all the credit in the world. And I'm glad he stuck around. And I'm glad Michigan gave him the opportunity to stick around. 100%. I think the thing about it is a lot of times people, they feel so inclined to apologize for you know, looking at Jim Harbaugh and saying, hey, I wanted him gone too. You know what? You were supposed to. Because Jim Harbaugh was paid upwards of $9 million to what? Win nine games a year? Right. To win 10 games. That's not what we paid him for. Which, and I say we because I am a donor to the University of Michigan, so don't get it twisted. But that's not what we paid him for. What we paid him for, we paid him to beat Michigan State consistently. We paid him to get to the Big Ten Championship, which means he had to beat Ohio State a time or two. Hmm. And that's what we paid attention. It wasn't for the National Championship. Although we hope that that would be the goal one day, it was we wanted to go to the big. We wanted to go to Indianapolis. Yeah, like everybody talked about. Oh man, Harbaugh's taking those kids to Rome and Paris. I don't care. Take them to Indianapolis. Right. Just take that? them to Indianapolis. So you you're not wrong for wanting that. Now here's where the credit comes in for Jim Harbaugh. He because he was given a chance. So hey, sometimes you need luck to bounce your way. Okay, mm-hmm. you know what? we we have COVID. We can't play Ohio State. Sometimes luck bounces your way because he was able to assess. All right, look. If I plan on doing this here in Michigan, like how do I get? How do I do it? Like where where do I see it working for other people, and where is it not working for me? All right, cool. One, we're not fast enough. Insert hiring of Ben Herbert. They get Ben Herbert. They're now the strongest team in the Big Ten. They're the most physical team damn near in the country next to Georgia. And we'll see if that changes in the national championship this game. They're now the fastest team on the field when they play. All right, cool. Now we got to go back to running the ball. You've seen what they've done. The running game has been amazing. They've always had a decent running game on the hard ball. But this is lights out. Yeah, it like is. The last two years have been insane. What Blake Corman and Son Haskins were able to do last year, and now what Blake Corman and Donovan Edwards were able to do this year, they are mauling people in the holes that they're in there. Find them. On the defensive side of the ball, 
Uh, the defense has done so much, but they're not playing just all-out blitz and man-to-man on the corners mm. by Don Brown. They're not doing that anymore. They're throwing you some different looks. They're confusing you. In the second half, we just talked about the endurance is there. And, oh, by the way, he's staying true to what he believes in. See, that's why I give Jim, Car- Jim Harbaugh all the credit in the world. So many coaches are trying to change. you got to change a little bit, yep. right? So many coaches are like, all right, man, what's, what's this new thing over here? How y'all, how this, how's this offense working? We got to do some of that. We got to get us one of these players. You know, we got to start going to pay players. You know, we got to tell players and families it's more about your branding than it is our institution. So if you bring your kids here, all right, yeah, we'll get your kids in the first round. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll get your kids' followers up on social media. Harbaugh's not selling you that. Harbaugh says he'll come here, he'll be able to compete for the greatest institution in the world. It'll be the team, the team, the team. Those individuals that don't want that, see, that's another reason why they win, and that's why it's worked. Because the guys that come here, they believe in what Harbaugh sells them in the living room. They believe in the ghost of Bo Schimberger, which is the team, the team, the team. They believe in... Well, you know what? When you give yourself to something greater than yourself, everybody's going to win in that equation. They believe in that. They are working for each other. They don't care anything else about the, uh, about the NFL. Yeah, distantly down mm. the line. But on this field with my brothers, this is going to get me to the NFL. The national championship game, yeah, I want to get paid and NIL and all this. This national championship, pay, it's going to put some dollars in my pocket. So I think he's still he stayed with that. And his players are having success, and now other families and other players who may have wanted to go the Ryan Day approach and make everything individual are looking like, you know what? There is something to what Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are doing, doing it this way. Jim Harbaugh should pat himself on the damn back for that because I ain't going to lie. I didn't think that was going to work, and I thought you had to adapt. You had to adjust. Hey, man, sometimes if you're that good, you can adapt and adjust elsewhere. But where are you with, like, what do you have to stay? Like, where do you have to keep it? Guess what? Those who stay, he stayed. And that adjustment elsewhere came in the form of the coaching staff. Happy birthday to Ron Bellamy today. You. Uh, you know, he brought in this infusion of talented young coaches that have brought energy, brought enthusiasm, brought a new sort of way about them. They know what's going on with in these kids' lives. Yeah. They can relate to what's happening uh, with all of them. I mean, hell, a couple of them are high school coaches like Ron Bellamy. Yeah. He knows more than anybody what kids are into these days. And you have to have those relationships. You have to allow a kid to feel like you are approachable to them. And Jim Harbaugh became approachable again. And and I just think that this staff he assembled is second to none in the country. And you got to feel good about that. You just brought up Ron Bellamy. I'm going to tell you a quote. Ron Bellamy loves Nick Saban. Like, Ron Bellamy, that's my brother, Ron Bellamy. Happy birthday to you, brother. He hosted me, by the way, on my recruiting trip to Michigan. Ron Bellamy asked Nick Saban because he played for Saban when Saban was with the Dolphins. Ron was in the Dolphins back in 2006. And then he ran into him later on in life when ben, since he's been at Alabama. And Ron asked me, he said, man, like, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you deal with all these Lions? And he was referring to, like, all the players. He said, like, you got all these Lions, but you're just one man. He said, I hire a bunch of Lion Tamers. Like, that's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Like, when you have a ton of Lions, you can't be the only Tamer. You can't think it's up to you to get everybody right. You can't think it's up to you to have to take care of each Lion on your team. Newsflash, there are 100 there are a hundred guys. There are a hundred guys on scholarship. You can't be in charge of all of them, but you know what you do? You hire coaches that can be those lion tamers for you, so you don't have to spend 24/7 worrying about the uh, wide receiver room, the DB room, the linebacker room, the offensive line room. You hire lion tamers, and that's what Ron Bellamy said, and that's what Jim Harbaugh did.